Today, we are talking all about communication tips in an age gap relationship. Because if there is one thing that most of us struggle with, myself included, it is learning how to communicate effectively, especially when you have a partner that is very different from you and has not had the same life experiences that you have had. That can easily lead to miscommunication in many areas of your relationship. My name is Vivian. I am not a relationship coach nor a relationship expert. I am actually an online nutrition and fitness coach. So I am 27 years old. My boyfriend, who I've been with for three years now, he is 21 years older than me, which means he is 48 years old, which is crazy to think about. So I am still with my boyfriend. I've gotten that question because I don't post often, so we are still together, happily together, I should add, because just because you're together doesn't mean you're happy, right? <laughs> and throughout our three years of being together, three years and three months now, four months, four months now, of being together, I have learned a few communication strategies, tips and tricks that have really helped me in my relationship, and hopefully if you are struggling with communication in yours, may give you some insight or be able to help you communicate better with your partner. So the first communication tip that I have for you is asking yourself, what is my partner's experience in this situation? So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, to give you an example, me and my boyfriend have very different upbringings. So I grew up in an upper middle class, white suburbia type of area. He grew up in Compton, in the hood, with the gangs. He had his first fight when he was five years old. I'd say he's had about 10 lives before us dating. So we have had completely different life experiences. And what that means is that we're gonna have a completely different filter in which the way we see the world. So for example, my boyfriend tends to see danger. He tends to see where things could be risky. He's very protective, he's very cautious of me. When we're walking on the street, he always wants to make sure I'm on the inside of him on the sidewalk in case what I imagine anyone, you know, walks by us with a knife, like I'm not the first one to get stabbed. I don't know. I imagine that's what's going through his head, right? Whereas for me, never been in a fight. I think I've seen one gun in my life. I like danger is really not in my reality because I've always been in very safe neighborhoods. I've really never come up against any super dangerous experience. So that's just not my filter. So the way we approach life is very different and he's a lot more cautious. And so that actually led to some miscommunication between us because I just couldn't understand why he was, you know, so protective and would do certain things or say certain things. So what I have learned is that before I judge the way that he says something or does something or before I get defensive, or reactive, I always think, okay, what has his experience been like in this situation? And why would that lead him to do or say the things that he does? And so why I ask myself that question, what has his experience been like in this situation? It actually really helps me understand and empathize with where he's coming from. And so instead of getting angry or upset or frustrated, I actually calm myself down and I don't really feel the need to react or say or do anything because I realize that, hey, you know, we all have different life experiences. I definitely notice as humans, we like to understand why people do things. And often when we understand the reason why, we no longer are upset. We no longer feel that this is a problem that needs to be addressed. It's more so just an understanding that has yet to be found. So tip number two or question number two that I ask myself whenever I feel like there's any miscommunication going on is I ask myself, what are his intentions behind this action or behind what he's saying? Because oftentimes we forget that even though you know, we may take an action or what they say at face value and we may filter it in our minds as something negative. They actually are coming from a very positive and loving place, right? So understanding what this person's intentions are can really help us no longer be upset or mad or think that this is an issue. So let me give you a concrete example so you can understand what I mean a bit better. An example is that my boyfriend, like if I have something in my face or I have something in my teeth, he is very quick to point those things out or you know if something looks off on me like he's very big on appearances and looking 
your best, right? I'm very much like you do you, however you want to look, you know, whatever. Like if you have something in your teeth, <laughs> Honestly, I probably won't. I actually I will tell you, but like if you have a zit on your face, I'm not gonna be like, yo, you got a zit on your face, you know what I mean? But anyways, so my boyfriend he'll point these little things out, like, yo, you have something on your face, you know, do you want me to get it? I don't know, just little comments about my appearance. And for me, it's really easy for me to get insecure and be defensive about it. And what I've realized is that for him, it is not like he's not being malicious at all. It's just him wanting me to look my best and he thinks it's a, a compliment. He thinks it's a kindness that he's doing. So whenever he makes comments about my appearance, I don't, I no, <laughs> I no longer react negatively. I will still get triggered because that's not something that, I, that we can help as humans. But what you can do is when you feel triggered, decide how you wanna act from there on. So when you're triggered, do you decide to get upset and yell at them or when you're triggered you decide to tell yourself hey they have good intentions breathe they don't mean anything by it move on right and so that second choice is now where i've come to react like that's now how i react instead of getting upset getting frustrated getting mad at them so again what is this person person's intentions and knowing that hopefully your partner has good intentions behind their actions or words can help calm you down and not feel like you need to make it a bigger problem or deal than it really is. The third tip that I have for you and again is a question that I want you to ask yourself is what is the outcome that I want from the situation? This is a question that I ask myself constantly because I am very solution oriented. I am not here to be right. I am not here to prove you wrong. I am here so that we can solve this conflict or miscommunication and get to a solution that we can both agree on. So when I ask myself, what is the outcome I want from this? It is not to tell him that he's wrong or that I was right or you know, to create drama. It again is, I want to resolve this conflict as smoothly and quickly as possible. So how can I do that? And so stopping and pausing before I say something, before I react and asking myself, what is the outcome that I want from the situation and how can I achieve that in the smoothest way possible really helps me decide what I should, what I shouldn't say, if I should walk away from the situation, formulate my thoughts before coming back instead of you know talking when I'm flustered and emotionally charged. So again, what, what outcome do I want from this situation? When you ask yourself that question, your mind will go to work on, okay, if this is my outcome, what is the best way to achieve that? Well, I probably shouldn't say that. I probably shouldn't do that, you know, and it'll give you better answers to the current obstacles that you are facing. So those are the three questions that I use before responding in any emotionally charged situation that has really helped me improve my communication skills while in an age gap relationship. I know it has been a very long time since I have filmed <laughs> a video. My track record seems to be about one video a year. Hopefully it is more frequent than that. But if you do enjoy my videos and you enjoy the topics that I talk about and you are in an age gap relationship or are interested in being in one, then feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you so much. And if there's anything else that you want me to talk about, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Bye guys.